Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here marking some portfolio pieces and I just decided to record what I'm doing to assist someone who may have to be doing the same process online at this time. So currently my students or my school is using Google Classroom. So I'm here now in Google Classroom. The students have submitted um, their portfolio pieces and their assignments etc and I'm currently marking to return to the students so currently I'm marking some circular letters and here I have one in front of me how do I go about marking and returning to the students so with um, this feature I am able to write on each document all right, so I'm just going to scan through the document and see what corrections needs to be made. So the student has, for example, SBA here. And um, I realize that, so she has SBA here. I'm highlighting that to tell her to take this off. That is not necessary. And then I add comment. All right, and that that goes on the document. So once she opens this document, she will be able to see that information being displayed. All right, so now I must say to you that not all documents will be able to be marked in this manner. Some of them you will have to download the documents and mark the documents um, when they are downloaded as they will look different from being here as to when they are downloaded. All right, I was marking my PowerPoint presentations recently and I realized that in marking PowerPoint I had to download each so I would download the PowerPoint and then make the corrections here in the classroom and return to the students. I will download this one in a few seconds to show you how that would look. Alright so I'm just going through I also realized scanning through that this portion is in double line spacing and it should be in single line spacing with a double space between the paragraphs. So I'm just going to highlight this and state that to the student. Between paragraphs. Alright. So and then I'm going to add that comment. Another thing that can be done is that because I've been marking for more than one student, the chance exists where more than one student will have the same error. And as such, rather than I type over everything, I am able to go back to that comment, select three dots that um, speaks about more options. And when I select it, it has an option to add to comment bank. When I add that to comment bank, I'm going to select it and it asks me if that's what I want to add and I select add. Then I'm able to go here on the right to the comment bank and when I go there, I will see all the comments that I would have added and I can use the ones that I so desire for that specific um, document at that time. Alright, so and then I go back to the document. So that's what I'm doing there. So I would have said that to the student. Um, I'm going to tell her to place this in single line spacing. So she has M. Samuels. I would prefer if she gives Samuels a proper name rather than M, although that is what the document would have had. So I told her to place this section in single line spacing and also to give a full name to this person. All right. So this is how it would look. There are other comments. All right. Other comments that could be made. But what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to download this document for you to see how it would look when I open it. Now you're able to mark there and once that student goes to the document, he or she can download it and open and they will see it 
in a particular manner or if they open it like this they will see these comments to the right and they are able to make their corrections accordingly so this is now being opened and i'll show you how it will look when i download it in microsoft word all right currently on the screen is a separate document that i will show you in a few minutes how i go about uh, marking that but as you can see document is currently loading and i'm waiting on that to show you how it will look once it is opened in microsoft word all right so here it is in microsoft word all right and then um so the document is here in the white portion and then the comments are to the side of the comment bank so the student will be able to see all these comments when she opens the document all right another way is um if it is that we would have downloaded this document prior we are able to write on it using the review tab here so i'm going to select review and there's an option to add comment so some students may not send you their work in um, google classroom they may send it in an email if they send the document in an email then you'll be required to open the document just as though i have it here in front of me go to review and click on comment all right but you will not click on comment as yet you will find what it is that you need to make that comment about all right and then you will make the comment uh, so I'm trying to find something to say. Right. Trying to find, okay. So I'm going to tell her that there should be two spaces before and after a line. So I highlight where I want to put that comment and I select new comment. And realize the comment bank opens to the side and I will now write in what the comment is. So I'm going to tell her to Please ensure that you have two spaces before you can't see it currently because the screen is very fine but I'm speaking so you can hear what I'm writing please ensure that you have two spaces before and after a line all right trying to see what else and so that will suffice for all of this Two spaces before and after a line. All right, everything else seems okay. I don't see the correction that I made here for the SBA to be removed. So I'm going to do that again. Go on review and select. Right, the comment is there. See, I can't add comment. So it is already set. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. And that is it. So once I go through and I make the comment on the document using the review, go to review, highlight what it is that you want, where you want to make the comment, select new comment and put it in two spaces before. I didn't have to do this, but I'm just doing it for emphasis so that you can see how it is done. All right. And then that will be it so once i'm through with this the next step for me is that i will save this document and send it to the student via an email if i send it to the student via an email when she opens it then she'll be able to see all the corrections that i have here all right then she is able to make her necessary adjustment all right she can accept or reject the changes that have been made what um, that i've stated to her all right and also here with the tracking this says final showing the final document showing the markup she's also able to make her corrections and then instead of showing markup go on final where all those information will now disappear and she can continue with her document all right let me zoom up a bit more for you to see she's able to continue with the document all right so those are the corrections that i've had made to her i'm going to go back final showing markup and then you can see all the markup that I've made as a teacher for her. All right. And then she will just make that correction and then send in her document to me. All right. Um, I'm going to quickly scan back over or go back over to the Google um, Classroom with the one that I had prior. 
I'm going to tell her that there should be two spaces before and after a full stop. And then I'm going to send this document to her. All right. So once I've done that, and I'm going to select comment, I'm also able to make a general comment over this section to the student. So um, I'm just going to say fairly, fairly good job. Please make the necessary corrections. And resubmit. All right. And I'm going to post that to her. And then I'm going to go to the top right and select return. So the student will now be notified about this document, its corrections that have been made, and that will be it. So what she's now left to do is to unsubmit this document in the classroom, make the necessary corrections, and then resubmit the document. And I will be able to see her corrections. And if it is now that the document is perfect, then I will mark it and then tell her that that can be tucked aside for when she's going to compile her portfolio together. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you. So that's how it would look in Microsoft, um, in the Google Classroom. This is how it would look in Microsoft Word if I had corrected it and handed it back to her via an email. And I'm going to now show you a document. This is a finished document that um, a portfolio piece, the block style notice and agenda, and this is perfect. So this candidate would have done this work, all right, per se, and it would have done this work and it is now correct. I've gone through, I've checked, there are no errors on the document. So the document is mailable according to CXC regulations and is good to go. It is okay to be marked. What do I do? I would now want to check this document for the student to know that it is okay and that he or she, all right, can now save it, put it aside because what is happening is that we're marking each portfolio piece and the student is doing, they're doing these pieces until they are correct. One error and the document is incorrect. So they are doing these pieces until they are correct. Once we find a perfect piece, then that piece, according to the CXC, we should mark the piece. So we put a tick to say that it's correct. We put our initial and the date when it was marked. All right. Anything that is incorrect, we see an error, a punctuation error, spelling error, etc. It is automatically incorrect and we cannot put a tick on it. It will get a zero to say that it is wrong. All right. So this is correct. What do I do now? How do I mark it as a teacher using the online medium? So I'm going to, how I do it or what I plan to be doing is that I'm going to now insert, go to insert and go to shapes and I'm going to use a text box. So I'm going to insert a text box here to the bottom right of the document. In that text box, I'm going to place a ticky to say that it is correct. All right, how do I get the ticket? Two ways of doing so. I'm going to go to symbols and I'm going to press the check mark. All right, so that is a little ticky there to say that, yes, we're good to go. I'm going to go home and I'm going to change that color of that tick to red. All right, or oh, let me select no spacing as well. All right, no spacing and the ticky is red. So that is small tick that is there. Another ticket that I can use, I can go to review and to the far right, there is something called start inking, which is to write on the document, right? Um, and I click on that and then I'm able to select the type of pen that I want and the color. All right, so my pen is now on red and I can do a little tick to say that that is correct. So any one of the two ticks that you like, you are able to use, all right? So I like the little tick right there. So I'm going to keep that and I'm going to close out of this and I'm just going to delete this one. But you can select any one that you so desire. So now that I have my tick, I'm going to press enter. The next thing I need to do is to put my initial. So my initial is DBW, right? I, DBW. I'm not going to put my initial in red. I'm going to put it in black and then I'm going to select a nice little font as if um, to go with how I normally, yeah. So that looks like my initial, something like a, what I would normally write. 
press enter and the next thing I do is that I'm going to write the date all right I'm going to put this at times in Romans on the date so for me it is 4 3 2021 all right so that is it next thing now is that I'm going to small let my text box be a bit smaller and then I'm going to take off the lines so I'm going to go to text box tools and I'm going to go to shape outline and select no outline what that just did let me undo so you can see it and click off my text box the text box has a black line around it all right I don't want that I want it to look professional as if I marked on the thing all right myself so I'm going to click back on the box and I'm going to go to shape outline and select no outline click off it and there it is it's now disappeared so I have a tick this tick kind of looks a bit small but so if you don't like it or it looks small like that you're able to um, go to review and select the ink there all right but again once the the, per, the teacher's um, initial and date is there with a little red mark it says that that document is correct all right so that is it now another thing I'm going to show you so you need to design this I'm going to use this as my signature thing now you know and so I'm going to save this to be used on the other documents for a while so if I'm going to sit today and I'm going to be marking then I'm going to save this how do I save it now I'm going to open up my clipboard and I'm going to click the arrow here so I can see everything that is there so you can right click on it select copy right right click and select copy and then it will come here on the clipboard but that is not the best way because when time comes for you to paste you're not going to see anything all right so what i do is that i click in the box and i highlight everything in the box and i right click and i press copy or you know Control c and then it comes to the side looking like this all right so i can click off that and then this is now okay so i can now save this and send to the student and tell them to put that aside as a portfolio piece that is now fully completed now I'm going to press Ctrl N to open a new document and I'm going to pretend that this document is a correct document. I'm going to go down to the bottom right of the document and I'm going to say now that this is correct and I want to insert my stamp or my seal on it. So I'm just going to go to my clipboard and click on it and there you have it automatically coming up on the on the, the document all right i'm just going to put that over to the right all right, right align and that is it all right so i showed you a few things a while ago hope i was not going too fast hope you were able to see because i realize that sometimes the video quality is not 100 but i would have hoped for the most part that you learned something here today all right i hope i was able to help some teachers because right, this is what I'm currently doing now and I just thought I would assist someone. Alright, so if you like this video, do, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please share it with another colleague or friend who you think may benefit from the content. And please comment so that I can know if you are as learning from these videos, if they are helping you or maybe you have a topic that you would like me to assist you with. If I can, I'll try to do so. Alright, but thank you very much for watching and see you in my next upload. Bye-bye.